hope you were able to grab some good lunch. And now we have our next speaker, Daniel Foray, presenting before you on the topic, Growing Beyond the System Trade. Let's give him a big hand. All right, Barcelona, let's go. Okay, so uh, my talk is called Growing Beyond the System Trade. And I hope a few of you are triggered by the fact that I put system tray there instead of the notification area. <laughs> I'm Daniel Foray, and I am the founder and CEO of Elementary Inc. So if you haven't heard of me now, uh, you know, we're an open source software company uh, based in the US. Uh, we're a distributed company. We produce uh, the desktop environment Pantheon, and uh, we ship it on Elementary OS. And this is Windows 95. 25 years ago. That's when all this started, actually. That's when uh, the system tray kind of came into existence, right? It was systray.exe, and the name kind of stuck from there because people discovered the name of the executable. That, they actually wanted to call it the notification area, right? But uh, we've never been able to get people to actually call it the notification area, and maybe that's part of the confusion, right, is, is that the naming, it starts there. The, the people just kind of have used this area for, for what they wanted. So when this came out 25 years ago, this is you know pre-smartphone era, right? So we didn't have push notifications. So that kind of whole concept was not invented yet, right? We had a lack of APIs at this time. And uh, so for developers, this was a really easy way to get the user's attention. You want to notify them of something that happens in your application, you stick a little icon in the corner. Right? And, it, and it's a way for you to get in front of people's faces when your application might be in the background. So, what happened here? Well, uh, a few years later, um, some known developers wrote about killing the notification area in 2009. And then in 2010, Canonical says the same thing, right? And in fact, they say that it's their plan to get rid of the notification area in Ubuntu 11.04. And it seems like there's a lot of things that go on and there's kind of like a little bit of a unification of like, yeah, this is, this is a bad idea, we wanna get rid of it and we're gonna do it immediately. And then nothing happens after 2011 for like six years. Um, and then in 2017, I believe, is when uh, GNOME has dropped um, support from GNOME Shell, uh, but Ubuntu still kept it, right? And then uh, last year, uh, elementary also dropped support for the notification area. So it's kind of weird that things went, went silent for a while, right? We had all this, this momentum behind removing it, and we agreed it was a bad idea, and we get rid of it, and then nothing happened, and then now we're, we're trying to get rid of it again, right? But why? Why, why are we trying to get rid of this again? And, and I think that's a question that we get a lot from users and from our third-party developer community, is why do we want to get rid of this API when it seems to work, right? Well, even Windows kind of realized that this design pattern wasn't that great in XP. Like almost immediately, they put this little dialogue in to try to give users back some control because they saw how out of control it was getting. That it wasn't really being used for its intended purpose, even on Windows, right? So we've known that this is kind of an unscalable design since at least 2001, right? So um, what are some, some reasons? Lack of user control, right? is the first one, and we're trying to invent workarounds and features to give control back to our users, right? That's why there's those preference dialogues for hiding notifications or only showing the most recent ones or things like that. It's like, okay, well, how do we work around this design now that all the developers are using it to try to give some control back to our users? So uh, another aspect that's a lack of user control is that this circumvents Do Not Disturb. Now we have new APIs, right? And we have new features like Do Not Disturb, and these old APIs don't respect those new features that we've come up with in the interest of giving users back control over their computers. And there's no opt-in to displaying these you know, indicators in the notification area, right? They just kind of pop up. It's not like when you pin something to the dash or to the dock in, in whatever environment, taskbar, right? It's not like you're pinning the application because you want it there. The developer has kind of shoved it in there and, and you don't get a say in it, really. You have to try to come back later and maybe clean it up. So lack of user control is a big problem. Uh, lack of enforcement is another problem, right? Uh, we trust developers to tattle on themselves, 
when they're using your hardware features, like your microphone, or when they're recording the screen, right? We trust developers to tattle on themselves. And it requires developers to do that extra work to be compliant. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm writing apps, I don't like doing extra work. So lack of enforcement is a problem, right? On both sides. It's not good for users or developers. It's not scalable, right? We talked about that, that you just get more and more apps in that tray. And this isn't 1995 anymore, right? Users have tons of apps that want to run in the background. And almost all of them want to send notifications or use some kind of system feature, right? So this is, this is kind of an old design. It was invented before the application space became like it was. And it, and it doesn't scale to 2019 expectations of applications. So we also have API overlap, which is kind of a problem because when we have developers and we introduce them to our platform, they want to know, how do we build an app? And the problem is, is they run into this question of like, oh, should I use the system tray or should I send a notification? Should I use Empress Media Controls or should I use the system tray? Should I use the system tray or should I use Cloud Providers API? And it seems like for them the easy answer is, well, system tray does all these things. So why would I learn all these other APIs when I could just use one API, right? And having that API overlap it is bad for our platforms. And it holds back the adoption of the new API, which means we don't get to give our users new cool features, right? That's what we want to do. We, we come here because we want to do new cool stuff all the time. We don't want to do the same old stuff. And our users expect us to innovate and to keep pushing the envelope and deliver them a better experience every year. And in my opinion, one of the biggest problems is that this is design dictated by API, right? It stifles innovation. It enforces uh, homogenous design. And I think a lot of us would agree that what we love about the desktop Linux landscape is diversity. We love that we get to choose our platform and it behaves the way that we think, right? And so these kind of APIs, when you try to have it have the exact same cross-platform platform behavior, it takes away users' choice and their ability to diversify, okay? And it's not accessible, right? We talked about that earlier. This is a big problem because if you need things to be described by the API as an icon, then people who have vision problems or motor control problems, they don't get to interact with these features, right? It makes it, it, makes it inaccessible for them. So we need APIs that don't describe the design. We need APIs that can be implemented in different ways for diversity and for accessibility and, and for our users. So let's kind of talk about like what are what are the solutions, right? What are the solutions to these problems? Because if the system try actually isn't solving problems, if it's holding back diversity and innovation, like how do we get around that? What what's going on? And some common complaints that I've seen, um, excuse me, when we talk to developers is cross-platform support. They're concerned about wanting to run their app on all of desktop Linux. And they know that system tray is supported everywhere, but they don't know if these new APIs are supported everywhere, right? So that's, that's a problem. And we hear from them that, that they don't know if they want to go in on these new experimental APIs. There's not enough time to port to these APIs before you remove them, right? But here's the deal. Uh, notifications, 2004 was the notification spec. It was called Pop-Tarts at the time because notification bubbles wasn't a thing that was thought of. That's how old this spec is. 2004 is when it started, right? And Ubuntu introduced Notify OSD in the messaging menu in 2009, okay? Whoops, sorry, I'm a little behind here. In 2009, they introduced the messaging menu in Notify OSD. That's before iOS introduces the Notification Center two years later. We were ahead of the game already at killing the notification area, the head of major platforms. That's how old these APIs are. And it turns out that in 2019, every major desktop environment supports the free desktop notification spec in some form or the other that at least support notification bubbles and the concept of a notification center. There's very few desktop environments, the custom environments that don't support these, but every major platform that most of us are using supports these APIs. So now, if we look at media controls, same story, right? With Empress, 
2006, right? Old API. It's not a new API. It's not experimental, right? So Ubuntu supports this in 2009, right? Same story. 2019, every major desktop has Empress Media Controls. Artwork. Fast forward, pause, play, whatever, you know, we, we, we've had this for years and years. What about quick actions support, right? Because developers say, I want my users to have access to the actions of my applications, even when they're not running. I want to be able to get to them quickly. Well, in 2011, Unity, again, does a launcher API, right? So that you could have quick access to applications in the context menu when you click on them. And in 2014, we amended the free desktop menu entry spec, right, to add actions there. 2014, it's not a new API, right? And in 2019, every major desktop supports desktop actions, right? Most of us implements them through context menus, but some of us have done cool things like being able to search through them, right? You could search for actions now. It's not just in an icon. It's more accessible. It's more diverse. So we've seen some innovation by having an API that doesn't dictate the design. It doesn't have to be a menu, okay? What about badges and progress? Because that's another thing we hear, right? I want to be able to show my user that something is happening in the background or have them glance at it, this kind of glance ability, without sending a notification necessary. But the, the end result is, is some way to see some kind of background progress. Well, Unity is a leader here again in 2011, Unity Launcher API, right? Uh, and today, unfortunately, only Ubuntu and, and elementary still support this API as platforms, I think. But, but this is a conversation for us to open up a little bit more in free desktop, right? Is this is developers are still asking us about how do we communicate this, this background information. So I, I want us to think as a room, like how can we can we do this? And I think Florian asked some good questions about maybe we can reuse the, the existing API. Maybe we don't need a new API, but we do need to think about this problem, right? Because this, this is this one is actually a bit of an ongoing problem. And cloud providers, right? This was mentioned earlier. Cloud providers. Uh, now, I thought that GNOME Files did implement this. So I have it on my slides that in 2015, Carlos introduced this API, right? So this isn't really a new API either. But uh, it, if, it, if it isn't the case that, that GNOME Files supports this yet, then, then I guess you guys should soon, right? So, um, but, but we started shipping this in, in elementary this year, right? So elementary files now supports cloud providers API. And so we'd like to see more third party developers adopt this. And you know what's great about cloud provider, providers API too is that it doesn't, it's not an API that describes how to integrate cloud services with a file manager. It can be implemented however we want. Right? So desktops like Mate or X, FCE, they're like, no, 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 our users want the icons in the panel. You can do that. You can totally do that. And that's what's great about these new APIs, right? Is it allows us to maintain our diversity, diversity. And if some of us want to change things because our users expect change, that's great. And if some of us want to keep things the same because that's what our users expect, then that's good too, right? But, but we can only move forward through things that are a little bit different. We have to kind of push forward. So we're hoping that more desktops announce that they support this going forward and implement it in their own way, right? So what about system services, right? This is where I talked about earlier. We expect developers to saddle on themselves, right? Well, Gnome is another innovator in this space, and uh, I think it was this year, but maybe earlier, that they're now uh, showing icons in the panel when applications are accessing portals, okay? And so this is something that the developers get for free, right? It just happens. And that's kind of great because developers don't have to go implement a new feature if you're uh, something that's capturing the screen that you don't have to go out and go, ah, man, how do I, you know, what's the API for this? It just is, if you're accessing screen reading as a feature, you're already getting this indicator, right? And uh, so elementary is planning to follow up suit here. We want to do the same thing. We want to show when applications are accessing portals and so the developers don't have to do anything extra and the users can see this background information, right? And, and for app developers, uh, if you're planning to ship your application as a flat pack or a snap, you're planning for portals. Like this is already a part of your plan. So you don't need to adopt anything. It's just going to work for you. And, and it's kind of great that, that that's going to happen. So I'd love to see other desktops 
doing this same thing because, whoops, a little forward here. I'd love to see other desktops doing the same thing because developers get it for free. And, and, and it's easy, right? It's easy for us to, to do something new and to diversify and innovate and make things accessible. And that's kind of the point here, right? Is not necessarily that we need to do the exact same thing or maintain the exact same features. Because that's not why users adopt our platforms, is that we can do things much, much better. And we can do them in a more Linuxy way, right? So that's where I want to leave this conversation, is how do we move forward? How do we grow past the system tree? And how do we close those little tiny gaps as platforms coming together, but doing things in our own way? Right? Whoops, I'm going backwards again. All right. So, that was my talk. Now you get to have the cool logo up. Do we have any questions? Uh, so, I have an app. Uh, which is not really an app. I mean, it's a thing that tells you stop typing on your computer. You've been typing for half an hour, right? Uh, I need an icon somewhere to say let people stop it and start it and, and do things with my app, right? My, my app doesn't have a window, so it doesn't show in the system, in like in the taskbar either, or, or the panel or anything. So if I don't put it on the history, where does my interaction go? Right? It's the only place I can figure out for my interpreter. I don't need notifications, right? It's like, I mean, I agree with all those things you said. It's like, apps should use those APIs. But like, where does it leave me? Is there, do you think there's any of those I should be using? Is there any other you haven't talked about that might help me? Or? Yeah, I think that's a, a perfect use case for desktop actions, right? Because then you can have users not only access your applications icon when it's in a taskbar or a dock, but also from the applications menu. And then like in our desktop environment, users can search for this. So if they want to access it by typing, that they can get to your actions easily. You get all this for free. So that's definitely uh, a case for action spec. And if another desktop environment, um, like FCE or Mate, wanted to add these actions to applications that are running in the background and show them as a panel icon, like they could totally implement it that way. Right? So as a developer, you kind of get this cool platform agnostic integration um, and you don't really have to worry about like, does it need to be a system tray icon or not? Like that's kind of the platform. Any other questions? All right, thank you guys very much. from the top. So do we remember when did iOS release the notification center? Like which year? 2011. Yeah, so we have like hands down the best audience, the most vigilant audience, that's great. <laughs> okay, okay, let's prepare for the next talk. Uh, it's a <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>